Jazzcast Pros. Greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Father Torch, the podcast to help you, the new and old, renew fathers, cope with the anxiety and stress of fatherhood so you can be the father you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of Abimelech Foundation, an artist, a father of nine. My mission is to help you reclaim your power and ease your concerns about being a father in today's social climate. I'm excited about this episode. This episode deals with the relationships and understanding, or overstanding, I should say, of the expectation and unrealistic expectations of fathers' relations to their children, their mates. A lot of times when I'm talking to my empress, my wife, I'm doing it over food. It's a comfort. It's not so much a distraction, but a comfort. One of my favorite foods to do it with her, to talk with her, is pizza. Creative pizza is where we go. 766 Monroe Avenue, across from the Speedway gas station. At Creative Pizza, we sit down, we have a quick casual slice or a personal pie, and we talk about our situation. I love it because it's big with love, right? Cool atmosphere, fresh ingredients. My only place I can get my vegan meatball and my sexy cheese. So mention Father Torch and get the five ninety nine lunch special with a drink, of course, at 766 Monroe Avenue, right off its 490 exit. You can't miss it. You won't regret it. Mention Father Torch. It's not an easy concept to talk about relationships when it comes to men in general. Because we are so oftentimes, it is a double standard or it's a double standard of how it's perceived, how it's expressed, or even what is accepted. A lot of times when we are dealing with men with, based on relationships, let's say relationships, our relationships comes from our upgrowing, our religious background, our culture, our environment. But it starts, it starts with the relationship with our mother and father. No matter where you come from and how you are bred, the relationships is the foundation which starts with the parents. If it's rocky at first, it's not guaranteed that it will be rocky always. But if it's never corrected or adjusted or even simply explained or communicated, it's rocky right down the road. Let's start with the basics so we get a better understanding. When it comes to understanding relationships, relationships goes both ways, a double-edged sword. So again, this is my understanding, so please bear with me. When you are dealing with relationship, you are you are receiving as well as uh, um, uh, putting out. A lot of times, what you receive is not always the same what you put out because mm-hmm. it's not always understood. If I don't understand me and you have a relationship with me, having a relationship with someone else can be proven very difficult or misunderstood. If I'm used to someone who is aggressive, competitive, and just you know, they got to get it in and get it out. And, and everything is just mm, all the time. You're dealing with a personality that's, that is going to be quick, right to the point, out of the way, and, and it's going to be short-lived. If you're dealing with a person who's kind of kind of laid back and they, they kind of like, eh, you know, just go with the flow and, and things, it doesn't mean it's going to be a better relationship because it depends on the, the person I'm dealing with. That means problems or issues won't be resolved because I'm kind of like, eh, you know, it's okay. You know, I'm going to just let it go and it will work itself out. Understanding yourself will better help you understand who you are dealing with or want a relationship with. Now, when it comes to our children, as men, when it comes to our children, oftentimes we have missed an, uh, an unconscrewed understanding of who and what we are dealing with. Understand we are dealing with a child that has two different type of parent. You have the mother and the father, and you have two different personalities in one, two different personalities that's going to make up something else, but not exactly like the mother or the father. We might have traits. We may have patterns. We might even have some type of trend at a certain age or time, because as we know, it changes every seven years or so, or every seven cycles. We as men must be adaptable. We must have foresight. If you are leaning to one way, we must adapt to see how we can curve or correct or even go with the direction you are going. It's not always so prominent or so real to try to bend something into a direction that you may feel is right, but is not right for the individual. We're dealing with too many people when it comes to relationship is everybody wants to bend someone to their will. That includes children and that includes our spouse or our significant others. We have too many 
force things versus molding and, and conversing and to getting together. We have too much of this, do it my way or no way, or do it my way so I can be better. You cannot be in a relationship with anything or anyone if it's always about I. There is no I in relationship. Relationship deals with we together, unity as one. We cannot get together and say that this is what it is about a relationship. So father's understanding of a relationship is based on certain aspect of expectation. Any man, and I don't mean every man, will, will respect a woman who respect and love them. Listen to what I just said. Respect and love them. Not love and respect them. Respect and love them. Too many times we get into a relationship with someone who does not regard or, dis- or disregards the level of respect of us as men, menhood. I could be wrong and you want to get at me and you have to be able to get at me without demasculating me, chopping down my balls, belittling me and disregarding my word. I could be wrong and you should know how to deal with me without, again, demasculating me, cutting my balls, humiliate me or, de- or, or you know, just belittling me. As a man, if you cannot respect me even in that realm, our relationship dynamics is going to be totally different and it's going to be wicked at a long haul or short-lived. And nowadays, there's not much people who do anything short-lived. It is pretty much is or isn't. And I'm sorry to say that reality, that not reality is a terrible way to live. It's a terrible way to live. It's a terrible way to be in a relationship. No one wants headaches. No one wants to live in a relationship where all I got to deal with is nag, 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 and big, 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 and all. there's always a backstory to the present story and it doesn't match. So it's like, what's the sense? No man wants a headache, but you respect the man and then love him. You will go a long way with that relationship because that part of the compromise would be more or less, more or less of, uh, I'm not hearing you. I'm deaf to your tone or is, you know, it's ass whipping between the two of us or it's a shouting match. Too many relationships with just shouting, shouting thing and back and forth, even with children. Look at the dynamics when you have a child that disregards the father or, you know, challenge him on every single thing. Look at the level of respect and look at the answer they would get for that. But if the child was was taught, again, this is from both sides, was taught to learn how to explain themselves and talk and say, you know, I didn't like what you did here. You know, how can we go? How can, here the words here. How can we go about doing things differently? But you going, you go, especially when you have a girl child or a man child for the, for the most part come at you and the first thing they say to the father, first of all, what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Listen, that shit, they will get you killed, right? Because no man is going to want to tolerate such disrespect. And and, and if you're going to do that, then peace be unto you. I know from my generation, okay, the brothers who are born within the late 70s, early 80s, and 90s, come from a generation that we do not put up with disrespect. And disrespect, we all know, comes in many different fashions. However, however, we all know it comes with a different household, the environment, the perception in life, the expectations, some unrealistic. It comes with it. But here I go playing devil advocate for my brothers, for my men. We cannot give disrespect and say, I want respect. You cannot deal with a woman or a child if all you do is charge them all the time. You charge them without explanation. You charge them without without reason, right? Without communicating. Now, it's not about the fear factor or the authority, but the communication is key. It shouldn't be that, well, they should know how I am. They know I don't play that shit. And it's like, no, they, they don't. All they know is the fact is that their way of communicating is ass whippings or shouting or belittling, right? Or just them to destroying shit. That is nothing. That is not a sign of a man. That is a sign of a child. Of a, you know, I can't get my way. Get temper tantrum, and everything is a mad and break, and and I can't talk to you. And you get mad, and all you do is you know huff and puff like a bull in in, in, in a china factory, and then you, you know, then what? Nothing get resolved. Or to my laid back and so called quiet brothers, it can't be. Well, I'm not gonna say nothing, and you let that thing fester, and as soon as something happens, you go right back to the point where you was mad before, and you know shit happens. Or to my quiet and silent types, right? To my quiet and silent types, it can't be, well, I'm mad. I'm going to show her differently or I'm going to do something differently. And I become off, I come off spiteful. I start doing vindictive things. 
Again, all of those traits is nothing but a man who has not transitioned into manhood. Again, I say man because of the age, but has not transitioned into manhood. Like he didn't get into the stage where he has to think, use logic. Then he then then he recognized what he's feeling, and then he's able to express it simultaneously, right? Able to exp express it. Or if he's not the verbal type, he's been able to demonstrate it and say, this is what's not going to happen. This is what I'm hearing, and this is what I'm observing. Be able to articulate or show action of what it is that is out of order. Fathers represent authority. So they should be able to understand or overstand when something is out of order. When it's out of order and go to his queen. Okay, okay? go to his queen and say, this is what I observed as being out of order. And his queen who should respect and love him should say, I agree or this is what I have found as well. And reason those things together, but we don't have that anymore. We don't have that kind of respect or dialect, right? Everything is, bitch, what I tell you, and nigga, you ain't this, and 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 you just a man, and you just a woman, and all kinds of degrading things to get your point across. It has to be better than this. It has to be better that we cannot sit here and think that this is the best way to communicate while in a relationship. When it comes to the children. We must be able, we must, as men, as men, we must be able to adapt without losing the foundation of a father. You should be able to articulate. You should be able to uh, oversee. That means have foresight. Oversee the hidden dangers that you can properly warn and train your youth to protect themselves because you're not going to always be there. You're not going to always be there to rescue them. You're not going to always be there to think for them. You're not going to be always there to simply do it and, and take it for them. you got to prepare them for it. Number two, as fathers, relationship to our children should be such a bond that even in the midst of a loud city noise, they can still hear your re the words of reason. They can still hear you without the, what? What'd you say? Oh, man, you're doing too much. It should never be that way. It should never be that level that we can't communicate and we can't talk with a level of respect. Number three, fathers, my brothers, even to your children, despite their ages, you must give them the benefit of the doubt. It cannot be what you assume. It cannot be what someone has told you. And it can't, in the damn sure, cannot be a theory. It has to be a known fact. That when you talk to your child and your child talk to you, it is ultimate truth and love and respect. You cannot say, well, because you dress this way, I assume that's what you're doing. Or because you're talking to such and such person that I, be I, I assume that you're going to behave like that person. There's no room for assume, assume things or perception of things. It has to be strong reality. That means truth and knowing. No guessing. No guessing. Because if you are a father and if you're a father as you should and is, that you will not have any trouble regulating, overstanding, seeing things for what it is, even investigation, you know, detective, you know, detective to say, this is what I see, this is what I've been through, this is what I experienced, this is my overstanding of it. Got to be able to explain, got to be able to talk and reason with your children. Relationship to a father and a child must be developed. It has to develop. Because you don't, it's a fight to try to make one. And these youth nowadays, they, they they crave the structure, but at the same time, they don't want the old ways of doing it. It can't be all about yelling and ass whippings. You got to be able to have a dialogue with them. You got to be able to explain certain things to them. I mean, really, truthfully talking, you got to be able to say, listen here, son. Listen here, daughter. This is what it is. This is what I'm seeing. This is what... I'm experiencing. Please talk to me. Let me know what I, if, I, if I'm right or if I'm wrong. It cannot be no other way. There's no other way of looking at it. There's no other way of seeing this. We can't sit back and say, oh, well, you know, from my experience, this is what it is. So this is what I'm going to assume it's going to be. And then here's a kicker. We as men often, and we accuse women of this all the time, bringing back old shit, bringing back old stuff and say, this is it. We as men tend to reflect on our old behaviors. And assume that our children are doing the same thing. Assume that, right? We assume they're doing the same thing or worse, right? Depending on your upbringing. 
I, I know me. <laughs> I, I know I have a past, but I can't assume that my children are doing the same thing or worse than me, especially if I never communicated it with them. But knowing myself, knowing my emotional and vulnerabilities, knowing how I am as a man, much less when I was a child, I, could, I, I should be able to closely relate to them how it feels to go through such adolescence and decisions in your life, making decisions, you're facing your defeats or your, your triumphs and your accomplishments. I should be able to recognize and articulate or even relate to what you may be feeling, but not exactly what you're feeling. Because I'm still learning how you may perceive it. I can give my experience and it may dictate a little bit, but it's not exactly the same. For one, time changes, space changes, environment changes, right? So it's never the same. So assumption, assuming, perception, dangerous things that have in a relationship, especially when you don't have the known facts or the wisdom or the experience to handle it. So when you get into a relationship, my, father, my, my fathers, my brothers, know yourself. Know yourself to what you're dealing with. Know your boundaries. If you get in a relationship with a woman who has children, again, boundaries. Boundaries. Know your boundaries and know your limitations. Because if she has a man child... If you've been thinking about starting a podcast and you want to include interviews with people across town, Riverside.fm offers unbelievable high-quality recordings regardless of your or your guest internet quality. And it also gives you separate audio and video tracks for each person speaking. And unlike Zoom, you don't have to install anything on your computer, and your guests don't either. Head over to Riverside.fm and use promo code JazzyCast to get 60 free minutes of recording and 15% off a membership plan. In the, in the household, in the spider's age, most women will say, you're the man of the house. That's like giving a five-year-old a key to a truck and say, hey, you can drive this now because you're the only one. You, you're the master of this truck, even though I never trained you. I don't know how to train you on it. But hey. Here's the keys. You have domain. So as a man, as a father, I will come in here and see there's a young king man. So what can I do with this king man? I have a choice. Not an option, a choice. I can either train him to be the proper king man that she has ordained him to be, his mother, my queen. Or I can say, what do you know so far? What's your understanding of this? And what can I do to help you with this? But if I come in here and step on his shit, crash his vehicle, and tell, and then criticize and tell him, you didn't know what you're doing in the first place, you really think I'm going to build a relationship or overstanding? Man, please, it's going to be nothing but war because no one wants to be dominated. No one wants to be ruled, and no one cares to someone else coming to take over. No one relinquishes power, power just right away. Now we can come in here and say we want we come in peace, we come in peace. That's a definition. There's no peace without war. There's no peace unless someone won. You know what I mean? I, I don't know any other way of putting it. There's, there's no peace unless someone give up, or there's gonna be war to have because you know you come in there as a king man, he's a young king man. Instead of training him, you're gonna go to war with him because the fact is you're not gonna want to take the time to teach him. That's the bottom line of it. I mean, there's more to this, there's more in depth. And I'm sure there is. And I would love to have a conversation about whoever wants to reason with me about it. But this is just broad brushing on it right now. This is just touching it on the basis. The point of this discussion is to open the eyes to my brothers and my sisters to understand that we as men, we see the relationship very differently. We receive relationship very differently. Sometimes we come in it blindfolded and we don't understand that when you, when you are disregarding us, you don't love us. When you disregard us, you don't love us. And we don't often see that because we're too busy looking at the pussy, the body, what we can get out of it, what clout. That means I came in this blindly and, and very foolishly because I came with the first brain versus all three brains, the mind, the body, as well as your hood top, right? So, I mean, <laughs> there's, no, there's no connection. As a man, I'm going to speak to you as a man, right? And a man with experience, a king man with experience, I have to have connection for order for me to establish relationship with you. The connection could be rooted to the respect you give me that I can build with you, that I can build with you as a man to a woman, as a man, I can build with you because you have respect for me and you respect me as an individual. Now, granted, most women carry 
the issues or the, whatever dilemma was of the past relationship with them. But as a man, we can help unpack, but know your boundaries of what to unpack and what not to unpack. Some things, yes, she has to do her own. Other things is that you just show her support, but keep your boundary because you don't want to be triggered and you don't want to be the blame for that trigger. You get me? Hopefully you understand me and I hope you can follow because this is real. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, check out the Healthy Illness Podcast with me, Kelly Marie, as we build healthy relationships while living with mental health conditions. I'm diagnosed and live with borderline personality disorder, major depression, and generalized anxiety. And despite those diagnoses, I've been able to live a full life. I have healthy relationships, a great career, and my mission is to help you do the same. So join me for Healthy Illness Podcast. New episodes every Monday on the Jazzed Cast Pros Network, found on the podcast player you're listening to right now. Be the light. What if you could create your own pizza, brick oven baked with unlimited veggies? Well, now you can at Create a Pizza, the only fast casual pizzeria in the city of Rochester. The dough is fresh. The sauce is homemade. Right now, you can try the Father Torch Lunch Special for just $5.99. Vegan meatball pizza with sexy cheese. Only at Create a Pizza, 766 Monroe Avenue, across from the Speedway. What will you create at createapizza585.com? As men, again, we deal with relationship very differently. We have to deal with it on a logical, then emotional. Not the emotional, then logical. It, it can't work with us. That's not how we functionate. Then we have others who, who complain and say things like, well, you know, toxic masculinity, right? And we use this word very harshly. There is no such thing as a man without masculinity. If anything, as a lack of masculinity. But there's no, there's no man or manhood without masculinity. Is what makes us different from child to man and man to father. You understand? We can't walk up and down and have demasculated men want to play alpha or a man. It doesn't work. It hurts. It diminishes. However, are there people who abuse their power and abuse their position? Yes. Yes, they are. You have men who abuse their abilities or you have men who use this abilities and hurt even themselves because as men we guard our pain just straight up we guard our pain we walk with our pain right in our chest we walk with it we're in our sleeves right because we don't yet have the understanding some of us not all of us we don't have the understanding of how to express certain type of emotions depending on our upbringing our environment who we are as a culture our tribe however we go about doing things would dictate how we express our emotions. Not every man can do it. Doesn't mean it can't be taught, but if the right woman, and I said the right woman comes in a man's life and he accepts that and she respects him and then love him, he will flow like the river. He would express himself. He would change things. He will move mountains for her. Why? Because she, she respects him. Excuse me. She respects him. She respects his anticities his loving ways, his caring nature, his nurturing ability, his protection, his ability to provide, to be sensitive and hard at the same time. We got too many fathers, too many men out here turning these women very masculine. What happens to a rose that grows through a concrete? It grows thicker thorns to protect itself. And we have too much of our sisters who are more masculine than the men because they've been hurt they be stamping on and trampled on and, and just the works. And they themselves now close off the empathy and empathy hearted and, and, and the, 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 the advocacy abilities that they have. So now you have harder women. You're more abrasive. So now the, the little thing that triggers them now, they beat you down. Because again, 100% of their past relationship, they walk with. Never mind all this, I'm a hard, I'm a player, and this and that. Anytime you involve yourself with a woman or a man, and you become intimate with a woman or a man, listen, you become intimate with someone, sexually, whatever. You become attached to a degree, depending how much time you are dealing with this person, how long, I should say. But even with that, even with that comes with pain and, and, and triumphs. 
And if you're not connected, as I said, brothers, if you're not connected, you're asking for trouble. We think it hurts so much when your child says no to you, disregards you, shuns you, does something that feel, makes you feel shame. We think why it hurts because of that connection. So if you have a connection with the woman and you're connected, whether you hurt her first or she hurt you first, it hurts. And how you express it, well, it goes a different way and goes many different directions. However, it is important to understand the perception and the main deceiver of most men is that we don't feel and that we don't have emotions and we just dogs. If you cannot make a connection with a man that, that is based off that connection from the get-go, then your relationship is doomed. Because again, how you receive relationship and how we receive, receive relationship is going to be very different. Even though it has the same aim, everyone, everyone, even the child, even the damn dog wants a companionship, that friendship, that fellowship, that empathetic and caring individual. Two, every man wants someone, their loving partner, to be respectful, honoring, advocate, as well as support. Even discipline. I'm going to say even discipline. I'm going to put that in. Even discipline. Because you got to know how to handle me. Because when I become unruly, you got to know how to handle me and discipline me without belittling me, disrespecting me, demasculating me, cutting my goddamn balls. Excuse my French. Next, you have to have an open communication. It is a must. Some of us are affectionate to touch. Others of us are affectionate to words. Some want affirmation. Some of us require, require that support and advocacy from our queens. It shows connection. It shows intimacy. It gives us the, the ability to say, what can I do to contribute to your happiness? And while we're on that, to both sides, there is no such thing as me making you happy. I can add to your happiness, but I cannot make you happy. Let me make that clear. No man or no woman can make you happy. They can add happiness to you. They can add what is already there. They can contribute and strengthen what is already there, but they cannot make you happy. End the conversation with that. End that with that. And that's the best I can give you with that. But I say this much. Keep in mind that you are human. You are a spirit living in human experience. And as fathers, as a brother's keeper, as a fellowship to one father to another, it is important that you talk and open a dialogue between your children and your loved one. That you open it with reasoning and understanding that mistakes will be made. And how to correct or resolve such issue takes time transition. It takes experience. It takes the wisdom that you as endured as a man to, again, use your darting powers, strategy, and experience to hold order that your family can grow stronger. Keep in mind, that does not come with just simply having a one-night stand, with just simply having a fling or a five-second joke. It doesn't come because I say slick words and I was slick and smooth with it because I had lyrics. It comes with experience, wisdom, and knowledge. It comes with the overstanding as manhood, as man, into manhood, that we understand and overstand our sense of, sense of responsibility and accountability as a king man, that we hold these things in order, our mental, our emotional, our physical, our spiritual, must be as one, must be as one, must be connected. It is a daily practice, daily practice. Let me mark this day that today is the 19th anniversary for me, that me and my empress and queen have dealt with things through the 19 years. 19 years, mistakes was made. Pain was there. Love was there. Communication was there, but nothing would change. I would never change anything. So I say this to you guys, to my fathers, stay vigilant. Stay vigilant and open your mind to the possibility that what you have is a gold. What you have is hard as diamond. And what you have can always grow and improve. But it cannot do it without open communication, overstanding, and being true to you as you are. Be the father you wish you had. That means be the man and the better man 
that you know you are. I'm your host, Ra. I thank you for coming. I thank you for even being here. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're listening to me, Father Torch. Check me next time as we go a little more in, in depth in understanding relationship with yourself and dealing with our health. In dealing with our health. My brothers, I tell you no lie. You get a kick out of it, and I tell you, no, I, 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 and overstanding that we know how we are with our health. We have lost too many brothers, too many fathers, too many sons, too many to mention or name on simply not taking care of ourselves. I'm your host, Ra. Thank you. Check me out, fathertorch.com, Rastafari. Bless it. Girl, where have you been? I haven't seen you at work in a while. Girl, I quit and started my own business. Really? That's amazing. How did you do it? Well, I've been listening to this Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast, and it really helped me change my mindset from an employee to a CEO. All that from a podcast? Yes, the Beauty Boss Millionaire walks you through the process of starting a business and making your first million. I need that in my life. I need someone to help me. Just go to beautybossmillionaire.com or pull it up on your favorite podcast app. It's time to boss up.